Um, hello, everyone. Uh, good evening. Uh, this is City of Portland's workshop. We are going to be, it's not a normal city council meeting. We are going to workshop the clean election. I think we did started working on it last week. And uh, today uh, we are going to see what we can get before we put it on the agenda. And uh, the mayor is going to join us online. Uh, or oh, she's going to try to join us online. She's traveling. And in her absence, I am um, stepping in for her as mayor pro tem. So um, I'm going to hand it over to you so that you can walk us through. And I think our colleague Anna also have uh, two other versions that she wants us to look into. Thank you, Anna, for bringing that forward. Well, Mayor Pro Tem Ali and members of the council, uh, Jim Katsafikas with the law firm of Perkins Thompson. Uh, Brandon Mazur is here from Perkins Thompson as well. And we've been assisting the city council to try to meet its obligations to put together a clean elections ordinance uh, under its charter obligation. And we presented a draft ordinance last week. When we did that, uh, am I supposed to be pressing a button for volume here or it's like a spaceship, but I'm not quite sure. Talk into the mic. Checking one, two, three. Hello, uh, okay, how's this? All right. I, I understand, I've, I've heard the results when it does. Uh, so there were just a few issues that we'd initially talked about resolving here tonight at workshop before uh, we come back with a draft for first read next week. And that would be uh, really talking about the methodology and the numbers to increase the number of qualifying contributions and to reduce the amounts distributed to candidates, whether they are uh, in contested race or an uncontested race. So that was what we initially had talked about. Uh, also, there were a couple of other issues that needed to be resolved, such as who do you write the check to with a qualifying contribution? Is it to the candidate or to the city? And also, uh, when it comes to business entities that are substantially under foreign influence, what percentages constitute ownership by a foreign business? 1% investment, uh, 5% of two or more. Those are the numbers used by Seattle in their ordinance and also are being proposed to be used by San Diego in, in a memo. Uh, but since then, there are some additional questions that have been raised uh, regarding the total amount of funding uh, through the city budget each year, whether there would be a supplemental funding rounds, I, I uh, believe up to four have been suggested, whether the qualifying period would start uh, for future elections on June 1, and then also uh, a question about whether there should be a pro rata reduction in numbers if the budget amount is, is insufficient for the number of candidates who decide to go clean elections. So those are, I think, all the, the, the range of questions that uh, are before the council for some resolution this evening. You can't take a vote. I understand that. We're just looking for some consensus so that when Brandon and I go back to, to amend this draft ordinance to get it back before you for next Monday night, uh, that we have a better idea of what that should contain. So with that, I, uh, Brandon has a proposal on the money side, the distribution side, and the qualifying contributions. And I know uh, Councilor Tavaro has one as well. Uh, perhaps it'd be a good idea to start there and, and look at those numbers and see, uh, see where the council lands. Thank you. So I guess as an initial matter, would it be helpful for me to share my screen with those proposals for the council and for those with Zoom or Mayor Pertab, yeah. So um, we'll, we'll walk you through sort of the three proposals that we put out. Um, I also have uh, Council Trevorrow's alternate that was sent to us last night or this morning, which isn't the most up-to-date, but 
uh, might give us some some at least baseline. Uh, so what's in front of you right now is what we originally brought you last week uh, with seed money limits, uh, qualifying contributions, the amount distributed, um, and some key dates that were discussed. Uh, if you remember, we had proposed seed money period, uh, the max being 5,000 for mayor, 2,000 for an at-large city council, 1,000 for a district city council, 1,000 for school board, and 500 at large, and then a 500 district school board. Qualifying contributions. So those are the number of $5 uh, contributions that you need to collect to qualify as a certified candidate. Initially, we had proposed for mayor 300, at large city council 150, city council district 60, at large school board and school board district 60 as well. And then the distributed amount, uh, which we did include a proration, uh, came from the Maine Citizens for Clean Elections original proposal, uh, but we proposed it as one distribution, uh, 120 for mayor, uh, 32 for an at-large city council, 12 for a district city council, nine for a school board at large, and 4,500 for a district school board. Uncontested, as a starting point, we just cut that number in half. That was our basic rationale there. We, we, I think we uh, shared at the last workshop, Santa Fe does, I think, one-tenth of uh, what's proposed for contested races for uncontested. And then the key dates, which uh, put some limitations on us in this original proposal, as well as the future proposals, that we wanted to, to focus on. Uh, the charter requires that nomination petitions be made available 127 days prior. And I can zoom in if this that's helpful. <laughs> um, we have proposed uh, for this year at least um, that qualifying papers and declaration of intent forms, which is discussed further in the ordinance, be uh, made available that same day. Uh, First day nomination petitions can be turned in 85 days prior to the election. That, that's in the charter, uh, which would be August 14th of this year, where we propose that the same that same day be uh, for the qualifying papers. Seed money report would be due the next day. Uh, the last day that nomination papers could be turned in is August 28th or 71 days prior. That's in the charter as well. And then we proposed that the qualifying papers uh, to be a certified clean elections candidate be the same day. And then based on feedback from the clerk's office um, with terms of going through all of the certifications and nomination papers and having to request checks from the, the treasury department, uh, they needed at least a week. Um, so that's where the September 8th, that following Friday came into play, which may come into uh, some of the discussion for uh, both our proposal where we show uh, multi two rounds of funding and uh, Councilor Travaro's, uh, because although the clerk's office is administering this sort of from uh, checking on the nomination papers, checking on the qualifying contributions, it's the treasury that has to issue the checks and they, the time there based on um, the city clerk's feedback is, needs at least a few days from the, from the check request. So what we, what we did is we came up with three different proposals. Um, the first proposal that we, we came is sort of the baseline for the other two, and that is to increase the, the qualifying contribution numbers and lower the distributed amounts. So the seed money in this proposal has stayed the same from our original proposal. We have increased the qualifying contributions as, as seen on the screen. For mayor, it is increased to 500, city council at large, 250, city council district, 100, school board at large, 75, School Board District 50. Um, so you'll notice that actually the school board for district went down slightly from the original 60. Uh, some of this came from uh, the feedback from Councillor Rodriguez, where he wanted, there was some suggestion to see a little bit more spread between school board and city council. Um, and looking at the numbers, 500, it's sort of a rough 100 signatures per district. And then we sort of tallied from there in terms of our, our logic. Um, again, we didn't, we, this could, you could come up with a billion different proposals for this. This is sort of the starting point for, for tonight's discussion and consensus. We then um, lowered the distributed amount. Uh, there was general consensus we felt uh, amongst the council last week to lower the amount distributed 
we sort of started with the mayor's race. Uh, Councillor Rodriguez, Councillor uh, Ali sort of suggested under 100. I think Councillor Rodriguez suggested, uh, you know, somewhere between 70 and 80. So we sort of took the middle and started at, at $75,000. Uh, and then roughly prorated that down further. So you'll see at large would be 25,000, city council district 10, school board five, uh, and school board uh, district would be three. Uh, a point to note both for the contested and uncontested, as you get further down the ballot, the delta sort of becomes a little harder to, to do an exact proration. So although we've sort of tried to do a third it became a little bit harder sort of for the school board and, and the district council. The, the uncontested was shrunk even further. So we didn't just do the half, we, we did that sort of a third-ish number. So it would be 25,000 for mayor, uh, city council at large 10,000, city council district 4,000, at large school board 2,000, and then 1,500 for school board district. And again, we, we played with that a little bit. It's roughly a third. Key dates in this sort of initial baseline proposal, do not change, no multiple funding. Everything is released uh, at the same time on September 8th. Our second proposal is, for discussion purposes, is you increase the seed money limits, increase the qualifying contributions, and lower the distributed amounts. And in our uh, associate memo with our proposals, Part of the conversation uh, was trying to get money into candidates' hands earlier based on Councillor Trevorrow's uh, points. We were grappling with that and the required timing in the charter. So one of the thoughts we had was, if you increase seed money limits, it does a number of things. One, it gets money into the hands of candidates sooner. Uh, it's still being proposed to just be at $100 maximum uh, per, per donation. It then allows, uh, it does supplement the fund slightly more because it's proposed that seed money uh, contributions would be deducted from any final distribution from the fund. Um, and if we do keep the proration in the ordinance uh, and that candidate decides to back, if it's prorated and they decide there's not enough money they could uh, back out of being a clean elections candidate, keep the seed money as, because they haven't violated any other campaign rules as their initial traditional campaign funding and move forward as a traditional candidate as a worst case scenario. So again, we, we kept the increased qualifying contributions from the baseline proposal one, kept the distributed amount same as the baseline one and increased the seed money limits. Again, key dates do not change in proposal two. Those stay the same with one distribution date. And then finally, alternate proposal three uh, is trying to incorporate multiple rounds of funding. What we've proposed here is two rounds of funding. Um, again, the seed money, we reverted back to the original, but again, you can push and pull any of these sort of proposals into what the council likes. Kept qualifying contributions at the higher level, kept the contest, kept the um, total amount distributed at that lower amount. Um, and then the key dates have changed slightly. Um, so some of this came with our conversations with the city clerk's office about that check writing and the checks issuing from the treasury. Um, so what we proposed is two rounds. The first round would be if the candidate turns in their paperwork on that first day that they can, their nomination papers, and their qualifying contribution papers um, on that August 14th. City clerk then would process all of those and issue that check on um, August 25th. And they, what we've done here is roughly given candidates one third of their funding um, at that first round of funding. With the, the restrictions in the charter, what you'll notice is it only gives you an additional two weeks or so from that September 8th date. Um, but it was the best that we could come up with in, in discussing with, with the city clerk. Uh, and then the rest of the funding would come on September, on September 8th. Um, and then it would be uh, either the 
fifty thousand on top of for mayor or the full seventy five thousand. Um, again, if the charter amendment uh, changes those dates, this is a little bit more flexible, but given those restrictions, this is what we thought was reasonable. Uh, and knowing that um, once you're into that September, October, um, trying to do multiple rounds, given the sort of week to two week turnaround time for checks becomes tough on the certification uh, and the, the request from the checks for the, for the treasury. So those were our three proposals for, for this evening's workshop um, for discussion purposes. I can share what we got last. I'm not sure how to proceed for Councillor Travar's options, but happy to share my screen with what we got last night with proposal. Do I think? Um, is that a, is that all right with you? He can share that, and I can kind of present what we have here. Um, that would be good. So um, I have I've kind of updated my proposal um, right up to the last minute here. And so what um, Brandon is sharing is what is before you in paper form as um, alternate proposal number two. Um, and there's one revision to the timeline that he will be able to share, which is the final date on the timeline, um, which in the paper version in front of you has been changed to October 15th. Um, other than that, what he won't be able to show you is what you ha also have before you as alternative proposal number one. But um, I can talk about the, you know, just sort of general framework of this. I think the big key differences between um, this proposal and what we've been looking at, um, basically there are three. One being that the, these proposals have multiple rounds of funding. They have an initial uh, round of funding when the candidate turns in an initial uh, requirement of checks, and then they have subsequent rounds of funding that um, that apply subsequently. And in proposal number one, there are up to four supplemental payments. In proposal number two, there are three. Um, the The maximum amount that they can potentially receive stayed the same from. Uh, the proposal that we were looking at at our last workshop. And the kind of general direction, as was noted that we were going in in our last workshop was um, in the direction of like more uh, qualifying contributions and less total distribution. But my sense was that with the rounds of funding, that kind of fixes that disproportion. Um, because if you look at the state system, it's actually fairly typical that um, candidates only reach one or two, or you know they don't get all the way to the end of the levels of funding. So this, um, you know, it, it you wouldn't end up in a situation where a candidate can you know collect almost enough and then qualify for nothing. You know they're able to kind of um, have a campaign that works for or have funding that works for the right size of their campaign. Um, the other thing was I, and I've been, you know, I think you, you know, I've been mentioning this wanting to get money into the hands of candidates earlier. Um, I kind of looked at some data from campaigns and found that, you know, candidates were spending like significant money even before July, even before June one of, you know, the last, the last mayoral race. So, um, having it not until, you know, September or even late August, I think is problematic to the viability of people wanting to participate in the program. Um, so what I have suggested is that in lieu of, um, well, that for subsequent years, we put forward a charter change that would allow the nomination um, timeline to move up so that, you um, we didn't have to wait as long for candidates to turn in their nomination papers and qualify as candidates, but we can't do that for June because um, we don't have enough time and there's a requirement on turnout for an election. 
Um, so in lieu of being able to do that, I've proposed that we develop an affidavit that candidates sign um, that they're personally responsible in the case that they don't end up qualifying as a candidate, um, that they would have to repay the funds. And that on the earliest date that we disperse the funds, they are only dispersed an amount equal to the uncontested amount because we won't know whether they're contested or not. Um, but at least that would get them something to get them started. Um, so you'll see I've proposed that first deadline in the timeline as July 17th. Um, trying to think so. I think, um, you know, in terms of the overall funding, these numbers are based on the averages of the winning campaigns in recent years. Um, so this is like what, this is what these seats are raising and spending basically. So um, my sense is that it's important that when we think about the overall number, that it be um, data informed like that because, um, in order for this program to work, we need participants. And if if candidates don't perceive that there's gonna be enough money um, to be able to compete, then they're not gonna participate. Um, so I think, is there any, um, Those are the major structural way. Oh, the other the other big one is that um, I've decoupled the timeline of qualifying contributions from nomination papers so that candidates can get an earlier start. Um, and I've proposed that they start um, on June one, and at that time they would need to sign a declaration of intent form. Um, I have some experience collecting these myself and it's a very slow going process. There's a lot of um, paperwork involved. Um, if you're doing it door to door, um, I mean, for me, I would average about two per hour. So um, I think allotting that extra amount of time is gonna be crucial to candidates to be able to, um, to make it and be participants in the program. Uh, those are the major structural changes. Um, I put in my memo some a few other things. I think that um, realistically, we ought to think about upping the budget for this um, because we have a responsibility to create a program that is going to be successful and that um, is viable for the candidates. Um, so I think that is essentially. Um, my as simplified of a of a com complex program um, as I can make it. But if anybody has any questions, um, I'd be happy to hear it. I think I don't know. Um, I can look for you know guidance, but I think generally we're looking for what's going to constitute a first read at this point. Um, and still, we would have time you know to make amendments at the time that we we vote on it. So. Uh, thank you, Anna. I'm going to look at uh, our colleagues and see if anybody have any question for Anna or oh, uh, let me look online. No, we're not taking public comment. Oh, Councillor Fani. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Um, just a couple of quick questions. Um, I was trying to read through to see if it was outlined and just really more for the benefit of um, the public. So can people give both qualifying contributions and seed money? I believe so. I don't know that it's specifically outlined. That is the way that the state program works. And I should mention too, I, I did have an opportunity to meet with the clerk's office um, just about an hour ago. Um, and um, Ashley is out right now. So I was able to meet with Paul. Just, I wanted to make sure that their office, you know, at least got a first um, sight of what I was gonna present tonight. And um, 
they kind of mentioned to us uh, a couple of things. One is one was with regard to um, the date of the seed money report. And we talked about maybe that a more workable date for that might be um, the time at which they, um, I'm trying to remember. I think it was the, the first day that um, they turn in qualifying papers. So I, anyway, that's something that might, might change, but yeah. Okay. Um, and then the second question is, would the seed money also, for this proposed timeline, would the seed money and qualifying contributions both be able to start being collected as of June 1st? Yes. So both at the same time. Yeah. I think that's the only questions I have. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Councilor Tonya. Any other questions from councillors? Um, Anna, I have a question for you. In the presentation that um, Brandon made, I think on the third option, uh, they cited uh, June 30th as the starting date on the timeline. Um, when people should take out papers? June 30th, um, for my proposal is the day that nomination papers become available, but June 1st okay. would be when um, clean elections would be able to start. So yours is June 1st? June 1st, yeah. Okay, and yours is June 30th? I believe so. I believe there's um, coincides with nomination papers. Yeah, we've a uh, couple of points. We've coincided the, the release of the qualifying papers and the nomination papers on the same date, partly due to the charter, uh, but also trying to factor in, and I think we'd have to do a little bit of calendaring. The fund won't be established yet. Um, so June 1st for at least this year may not be workable from just having the fund and this ordinance passed in time. Um, for a June 1st start date. We haven't actually calendared that, so. Well, I was, that actually was one of my points too. Um, we won't have uh, put the money into the account yet because um, we won't have the budget in place until July 1. So that will be, um, that will be an issue. But um, if they're just collecting the checks to qualify, I mean, it's not the disbursement date, the disbursement, the first, potential disbursement date would be July 17th. Um, so I think as long as they're just collecting and not turning in yet, I don't know that that would. Yeah, I think that's probably true. I think that gets into the conversation of who the checks are made out to as well, that we need some some guidance on, uh, whether it's to the candidates and it goes into a candidate's fund and one check's cut over to the city or directly to the city's fund where they may be coming in to try to turn in those checks that to a fund that doesn't exist. I don't, I, that's more a treasury question than us, but we wanna just make sure that the, the policy works from a procedural standpoint. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, my, the way that it works at the state level is that they um, are made out to the main clean election fund. And um, I think maybe it depends on when they're gonna be deposited, right? Which um, you would wanna have a, an account open for when they're deposited. Um, but that wouldn't necessarily, I, I don't know. They wouldn't necessarily need to deposit them on that date if they're just still just collecting. I don't know. Uh, Councilor Rodriguez. And just to confirm, and you, you intend then the seat money would have been um, written out to the candidate. Those, the five dollar contributions would be written out to the city. Correct. Okay. Yeah. To the clean election fund. Councilor Dyer. Thank you. I apologize if this seems like a simplistic request, but I'd really appreciate an exhibit of the actual documents that are required to be filled out by a candidate. Because I know Councilman Trevorrow and I had an off-site uh, off conversation and 
one of the challenges to clean election for those who've been in it and those who were in it and then got out has been the complexity of the documentation. I, I think we spend a lot of energy about distribution of citizen money to potential candidates, but I think a neglected area of concern is the bureaucratic activity that's required of a candidate and their supporter in acquiring the legitimacy to make application to that fund pool. So I don't know if it's appropriate in advance of the next meeting on this question, but I think it would be helpful to this counselor to actually examine um, the documents that are required to be completed by the candidate as part of this process. Because I think it's daunting to someone who is listening this evening, if this is their first exposure uh, to clean elections, when Councilor Trevaro, and I know she has a lot of diligence, could only accomplish two per hour. You know, that's, I don't think, I would hope that we could do more in an hour. It's, so that's why this question, I mean, I did it once and I, I related to the counselor. I mean, I needed a staff person at my hip to get it done. And there was always a fear, a gnawing, lingering fear that we had made an error. And if you show up a certain day and you're wrong for a handful of contributions that you collected, it could cost you the entire funding stream. So I, I would just like to have an opportunity for this council to take a look at that paperwork. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Councillor Day. Councillor Zarov. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Um, I would second that mostly because I've never uh, had had the good fortune of running as a clean elections candidate, and it does sound intense. <laughs> um, I appreciate Councillor Trevorrow's leadership on um, educating me on on this. Um, I do have one question. And maybe this could be something that we have for when we do have this as the first read. I made a note about um, just a little more information about the affidavit process for the seed money. Is that is that congruent with the charter's intent for candidacy? Does that? I'm just curious if that violates the charter, or if it or if it doesn't. Just want to be clear because I know it has to be X number of days before. And I'm just when I hear affidavit, I think you know that's that's official. So that's the only thing that I would just want a little clarification on, making sure we're not. Um, being ambiguous um, with that. And then overall, I think the, the good news about this is however we, we land on this when, when the time comes to vote is I have an expectation that a year from now, there are gonna be tweaks. We're gonna be, we're gonna be dialing this in a little bit further. So um, I just, I really appreciate the amount of work that's gone into it to get us to this point so far. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor. I also, uh, I have a question. I don't know whether it's a um, uh, confusion council or you. Uh, is it possible to amend that form to make it simple? And if yes, uh, who will do it? So there are no forms yet. The ordinance contemplates forms to be, uh, in essence, created by the city clerk's office for that de declaration of intent. Um, the affidavit is is part of uh, Council Trevorrow, so we we haven't uh, talked that out uh, thoroughly. Uh, and then the qualifying contribution forms, uh, I think the intent was to mimic similar to to the state, but the city's drafting its own ordinance here. So um, I think there's uh, some necessity to make sure that you can track the money and make sure that you can make sure qualify and and know who contributed um and into your your point councillor dion um when we were sort of gaming this out originally we kind of assumed that candidates would want to take out their nominating papers and their qualifying contribution papers at the same time and try to do double duties qualifying for the ballot and getting their signatures the difference with the state is they've got a primary season that but that we don't have here um so there's a loss of some efficiency there because if you get if you get the papers early you may have to go and knock on the same door which is great because it's going to be more voter interaction but it's it's less efficient in terms of signature collecting and and 
qualifying contribution collection. But the forms uh, are mostly supposed to be uh, drafted by the city clerk's office. This is the city's ordinance, and I think we can have some flexibility there as long as um, tracking it is, is doable and certifying it is doable by the city clerk's office. Thank you. Councilor Trevero. And um, I was, as I mentioned, talking to the clerk's office. I know they, they're they sort of like playing around with draft um, forms that are based on the state forms. Um, I think the it's it's not necessarily like the simplicity of the form itself, but just that there's so many things to sign when you're at the the person's door. So if you're, you know, asking for them to write a check and then to accompany that check, you have to have them sign a form that they are contributing from their personal funds. And then um, in addition to that, maybe you have your nomination papers with you. So you're having them sign as a candidate. And so it kind of feels like you're conducting a mortgage, mortgage clo closing, you know, at the door and it, it does go slowly and there's an opportunity to maybe forget one of those and then you, you have to go back. And um, so that's why, why it takes so long and it's really for accountability. Um, so I don't know that there's like a ton of wiggle room to just not have them sign something. Um, but, uh, and with regard to the, um, the affidavit question, so that, um, as Brandon mentioned, has, it hasn't been reviewed by our um, council, corporation council yet. Um, but I will say that, you know, we, I had help um, with this because, you know, obviously we, we don't have staff of our own. <laughs> and and um, so I, um, I spoke with the, um, the clean elections group um, that provided us with a, a memo early on as well. And um, they helped me with the first, the initial draft. Um, so that has been reviewed at least by their attorney. Um, and I think it does, my sense is that it doesn't play into the timing of the declaration of intent. Um, that's sort of a, a separate thing that needs, but I don't, maybe ran it has something, I don't know. Yeah, we, we can work with the clerk. The other thing I was just realizing while I was sitting here is um, we took in the ordinance itself, it sort of lists out what needs to be the affirmations that need to be in the declaration of intent, the affirmations that need to be in. We actually did thin some of those out from the state's version. So I think, for example, the name and address of, of the contributor's employer, um, we don't have that as a requirement to collect in, in our draft ordinance. Um, so I guess to to the extent that we've tried to simplify, I think we we did, um, but I think we can certainly work with the the clerk's office, um, hopefully to have something by the end of the week. But I'm not sure I can commit any of us to do that. I think the problem is we're trying to get an ordinance together for you for first read for next week, and so to also get the paperwork that goes along with that at the same time might be tough. But for the second reading there should be enough time that we could at least get draft papers from the clerk's office. Here I am committing the city clerk. I'll hear about this later, I'm sure. But uh, no, but I think it, it wouldn't be possible to do that this week. But once we have a draft together for first read, I think we can sit down and talk about getting the streamlined forms that would make this work. Thank you. Councilor Zero. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. I have a question that I think would be for the clerk, but considering the clerk is not here, I'm going to ask the manager. Um, when do you know when is our absolute deadline, the last meeting that we can vote on this in, in the event that there what's our wiggle room uh, in case we are because it seems like we're coming up to the wire here. I, I think we are, and I think it has to do with the timing of everything. I, I know that we looked at that scheduling for a while and we settled on these dates. I can't. Um, and I know it was due to all of the different timelines that we have pending. Do you guys have any more sort of information on that? I remember that the. No, I, there was there was there was some discussion early on that we could fit another workshop in and push everything out. It was determined to fit this workshop in now to to avoid. So. And I th I think that Ashley had indicated. You're reminding me, Brandon, that she had indicated like the May. The beginning of May was like the the drop dead date, but I I um would just put out there. I mean, you all know we're going to have the budget coming, and there's lot there's lots going on. So I think that was the other consideration here. The budget will be easy. What are you talking about? 
Um, well, thank you. I was, the reason I was asking that is in the, in the event, obviously being aware of everything that you're working on. And if, if you know, uh, for Councillor Diane's request that I think most of us seem to agree with on potential being visible paperwork, just being aware of the timeline, but obviously understanding that we do have a hard stop at, at some point soon. Thank you. Uh, if possible, uh, councillors are open to squeezing another workshop. So if possible, our councillors open to, if allowed, our councillors open to squeeze in another workshop, if needed. Councillor. I would suggest that perhaps we straw poll one of these proposals that we can take to a first read. And then at least we have a structure. And um, then if people want to continue to tweak it, we can do that through amendment on the second read, and we have that much time, what, two weeks? Yeah. Strapo, let me see by terms those who think we should go on. Are we strap polling whether or not to strap poll, or are we strap polling on a particular proposal? Yeah. I, your rules allow you to strap poll, so you don't have to strap poll the strap so poll. <laughs> perhaps I, I would suggest that we straw poll um, one of my proposals. <laughs> and I don't know if anybody has a pre preference on which one. Um, what? I mean. Let's do proposal one. Yes. Proposal one, okay. Okay. So are we gonna do like thumbs up, thumbs down to see those who will. Uh, question on the floor. Okay, okay. Councillor Phillips. Um, I, I, I'm, I just want to make sure we're clear, and I, I'm looking at, at everything, and so first I want to thank uh, Councillor Tavao for putting all this together. It's a lot of work. Um, I, I do, I, I guess I have, uh, my first question is, um, on all of this, we're making the assumption that it's, uh, there's a big difference between running for council at large and school board at large. Um, I've, I've never done either. So I'm just wondering, isn't it the same work to have somebody run at large, whether you're running at large for school board or you're running at large for city council, it's still seat. So I guess that's my first question and I don't know if any of us can answer it. Um, same thing as a district council and a school board district, like, so I guess the reason why I'm asking that question is because we're all over the map on how much the seed money is, how much the con contributing or qualifying things that we need. And for me, I would just keep the council at large and the school, school board at large the same and keep the council district and the school district the same. Um, because to me, they, they're the same seat. It's just one's at the school and one's at the city. But I, I certainly welcome um, questions about that. <clears throat> um, and so the other thing is, is that um, in looking at that, um, given what Councilor Travara said, as far as qualifying contributions, I don't think we should make this harder on folks, especially if you have this experience and you said you only got two qualifying candidates in an hour, um, that we do keep it as lower, not as low as we can, but in your proposal number one, it's at 200 versus um, the second proposal, which is at 300 and um, it, the attorney's proposal at 500. Um, so, and then, sorry, <laughs> there's a lot of what I'm trying to say. Um, and then um, I'm also not sure if, and I don't know, if a mayor needs $120,000. So I guess those are my three questions. Again, I don't know if anybody can answer that. Um, who will be answering the question? I think Anna will I mean, I can just kind of take a stab at my rationale. Um, there, the numbers in these proposals are based on actual campaign data from the last several seasons. And um, I think that when you look at the total numbers, like you look at 120,000 for mayor, it's it's jarring. Like that's a that's a lot of money. Um, we have we have talked in this these workshops about um, 
hoping to use this program to um, reduce overall spending in campaigns. And I think it's important to note that the primary reason for these programs is to reduce private influence in campaigns, not necessarily overall spending. But um, in my mind, the way that they can potentially reduce overall spending is through maximum participation. And um, to get maximum participation, we have to strike that right number that candidates look at it and say, that's gonna work for me and opt into it. Um, so how do we find that right number? To me, the best place to look is the actual data and the campaigns that, ha that we have been, um, that have, have been successful over the last few years. So um, I think, and that's partially also why the rounds of funding are appealing to me too, because um, you know, they may or may not reach that in the end. Um, so that's my assessment. I, I know I, I have had some preliminary conversations with um, some of the counselors about these. And um, one piece of feedback that I, I got was a will to kind of um, maybe population base these numbers as opposed to, um, you know, so that all the at large, um, you know, whether it's school board or council, Theoretically, that should be the same size campaign because it's the um, same size population. Um, I think that that's a that's something to consider um, whether to go that route versus actual database. Um, but my sense is that we should probably like pick the structure first, and then we have a couple of weeks to make amendments if we want to. Just my two cents. Thank you, Councillor. I think. Uh... I just I just want to confirm something. Um, so the proposal you put forward, Councilor Trevorrow, would be for a total of five hundred thousand in the budget. Is that is that correct? Yes. Oh man. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I just wanted to make sure I understood that because that almost doubles what we were looking at for the budget. No, I just I want to make sure people understand that um, what we had recommended from the Charter Commission was about two hundred ninety thousand. I think what was put in the proposal from. Perkins Thompson was 260,000. Um, and I just want to put that on everybody's radar. As I'm compiling the budget and as we talked about during uh, the budget workshop, I mean, um, you know, and, and everybody around the, the dais talked about a five to seven percent increase. This is one of those additional expenses that we, we'd be looking at um, and something that I don't have currently on the radar screen. So I just want to put that out there, make sure I understood understood yeah, that. I'm, I um I hate to be the bearer of that news for you. <laughs> um I you know and I I consider that too as we're um looking at these proposals and my feeling at the end of the day is just that this is a this is an obligation that we have and you know there's um language in the in the charter amendment that was adopted saying that we um we need to have these be i forget the exact words but you know um that they be fully funded or that they be um reasonable amounts so um you know this this was one uh charter amendment that was adopted out of several that were proposed at the last election and it passed with 70 over 70 percent of the vote so i feel like this is kind of a known mandate from from the voters thank you uh councillor rodriguez and then councillor dyer uh, thank you um i think I, I was gonna i guess i'll jump right where we left off if if, if it's helpful or or constructive um can we <clears throat> can we try to have um, those conversations somewhat separately, like maybe figure out the the numbers. Um, like let's plant the flag on that right now, and let's just focus on the model itself that's being presented in the proposals, uh, and that's what I want to speak of right now. So that because the numbers, I think there's a lot of considerations that we need to uh, have that don't necessarily change the model that's being proposed. I personally would like to speak. I'm getting ahead of that, Paul. <laughs> I personally would like to speak in favor of proposal one, um, except that um, I would, which in essence what I'm about to say makes a proposal two, um, I would like to see three additional disbursements. 
uh, instead of the four that proposal two has. Um, I guess the gist of it is that the reason I like proposal one is because the amounts, the initial disbursement amounts were smaller. And my thinking about that is that we can have a discussion about the supplemental amounts being smaller. So that then that total amount shrinks, we get closer to that budget goal. And then we might also satisfy some of the concerns that have been raised around the dais of that total disbursement amount. I like what Councillor Trevorrow said about having multiple additional disbursements doesn't guarantee that a mayoral candidate, for example, will get 120. Let's say they get their initial 40K, then they do one round or two rounds of the additional disbursements. They max out at 70K, which is the name that, um, you know, uh, cause, you know, Council uh, Mayor quoted me on, which of course would make me happy. Um, so again, the multiple disbursements aims at that overall goal that some people had, although I agree with Council Trevorrow that the goal is not to reduce the amount of money being spent, but to limit ex like influence of money being spent. So um, I don't know if that made sense, but I'm here advocating for proposal one with three additional disbursements uh, worked into it, which makes it proposal two. Ha ha ha. <laughs> I've confused everybody. <laughs> Sorry. It does, yeah. Thank you, Councillor Rodriguez. Councillor Dyer. Yeah, Some of what Councillor Rodriguez spoke about, I, I share in his sentiment. There are a couple of things here. If I understand this straw process, I will vote in support of proposal one because we have to have a structure. And then from the first read, we can debate some issues like Councillor Phillips may not share my observation, but I think the ratio of money and responsibility for signatures as distributed between city candidates and school candidates makes sense to me. All right, I'm, and I'm not prepared tonight to give you a mathematical equation in support of that assertion, but I know in my conversations with Councilor Trevorrow, we did wrestle with that in a certain sense. And she advanced the idea that this is a data-driven decision. I don't always like the data, but I can't ignore it. So I conceded that point to her. But the, there's also an underlying principle that I think Councilor Rodriguez is speaking about, but not directly, but it, in my mind, it underlies his concerns. As, we have to wrestle with the idea of sufficiency. What constitutes a sufficient amount of monies to wage a rational and reasonable campaign so it has credibility? You know, and that's a balancing test for us because a certain amount, clearly 120,000 might do the job based on history, but maybe $75,000 can do it. I know the proponents from MCCE, you know, even litigated the concept of sufficiency of funding from the city. So I think that has to be talked about in the open so that there's some consensus among this body as what do we mean when something has been sufficiently subsidized with taxpayer money? And although the old adage always applies to he or she who gathers all the money doesn't always win. So a lot of money can be a false flag, but a budget is a very real piece of math as well. Um, so that, that's where I'm at. I can support this model as a foundation to our discussions. It makes sense. I think multiple opportunities for distribution makes sense. Some candidates may say, I can do it with $60,000. I mean, how many signs can I buy? You know, they, that's a personal subjective de decision. And in doing so, they limit their draw on municipal funds. But we can talk about that. But I hope in that conversation, we, we do get to the question of sufficiency, because that's what we're really saying, right? How come a school board member only gets X, a district council gets Y? That's what we're really talking about behind those questions. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Councillor Dyer. So, um, Councillor Trevero, are you going to take the input from our colleagues and then redraft something and bring it forward, or how do you intend to move forward? Um, I 
I mean, I'm hearing from Councillor Rodriguez that um, that he likes the the um, qualifying contribution numbers and the distribution amounts in proposal two, but the number of rounds, no, in proposal one, but the number of rounds in proposal two. Um, I'm wondering if we could adopt a structure that's based on proposal two um, with the intent that I could potentially work with staff to make the numbers closer to proposal one. Um, I just, you know, I need a calculator. <laughs> <laughs> um, the 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 intent of having two proposals was just because I, I I don't know I just had an inclination that people might favor less rounds it's a little more simplistic but um, in doing the math they don't like the total figure is not necessarily divisible by the number of rounds so it will change um, the figure slightly. Thank you. And uh, um, Councilor Trevorrow, are you hoping that we're going to have yours on side by side with the one that Councilors uh, Jim and Brandon are bringing forward? So my proposal is that we take a straw poll on mine and if, if it goes up, then that'll be our first read. And if it goes down, then we take a straw poll on theirs. That's fine. We came here looking to see what numbers uh, you wanted to put in, and uh, we, we have no ownership in those proposals. We just needed to put something in front of the council. At that point, Councillor Trevorrow's was not in front of the council, so you needed something to react to. Okay. Uh, thank you. Councillor Fournier. Thank you so much. Um, both of these um, are great, I think, for me similar to what uh, my colleagues have said is I would like the lower amount of qualifying contributions as well as the three rounds. I think for me, that makes sense. Um, and then just playing with the numbers for what those totals are. I, I think I'm probably a little more aligned um, with the city manager. Just, I think maybe 500 is too much, but trying to find a happy medium where we could still adequately fund this. Cause I think that is a key component to getting participation is making sure that the money's in there to do this um, the right way for those three rounds, but maybe finding, is there a happier medium between the 260 and the 500 um, where we can still do this, um, but also make it fit uh, with the budget work. But I, I do like the three rounds, the lower qualifying contributions. Um, I think that's great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Rodriguez, are you crunching some numbers so that we can? No, um, so that you're taking you would want to do that. No, I was just going to reaffirm um, again, just uh, my my preferences for proposal one with three rounds of disbursements. All of the numbers, I believe, are part of a different conversations. But again, the pro three three additional um, supplemental funding rounds is what I favor. Well, I think uh, I am going to look at my colleague counselors and see uh, if we are at a good place. You know, I'm still fasting. So if we are at a good place, I will encourage us to um, figure out how, um, what is next steps. So I, I would propose that we just um, take an up or down straw poll on just what um, Councillor Rodriguez said, uh, proposal one with, sorry. Is a proposal one with three supplemental rounds, and um, I can I can run the numbers to figure out what that means exactly specifically. Hybrid one. Hybrid one. <laughs> hybrid one. Rodriguez hybrid one. It's the manager, were you going to say something? I, I just want to make sure I have it right. So it was one with three rounds and lower contribution amounts, right? Contribution amounts to be determined. Oh, to be determined. Okay. But I imagine a lot of these numbers will go down. Per amendment subject to the second read. Well, I think it's uh, we, uh, um, we're getting somewhere. Uh, we are at a good place to probably adjourn. 
Um, should we just take a straw poll up or down? People. Okay. For one with the three. Yeah. yeah, one with the three. Okay. And I think I'm also up. Yeah, so. Okay. Branton, go ahead, please. Just a slight clarifying question to make sure we do this correctly. Um, Councilor Farrell, in your memo, you suggest um, dropping the probation. And then a lot, if the fund runs out of money, allowing the candidate, the clean election candidate to basically raise traditional um, up, to the, up to the max of what would be distributed. Is that correct? That is what I put in my memo if the fund runs out. Um, and so we wouldn't do proration. So. Okay. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll figure that out. It may be another form, but. Okay. Um, okay, I just wanna make sure we understood that it's everything that's in sort of your your memo for now. And, yeah, and, and, it, and it should be clear the timeline too. So people are good with the timeline. Yeah, okay. Um, Councilor Tovaro, on that note, I have a question. Okay. So um, if uh, a candidate, let's say um, district one, two, three, four, a seat is open, and uh, there's a candidate uh, who is a sitting councillor um, and they have money from previous campaigns. And then uh, because there was too many people, in, there's a lot of candidates and they envision that uh, there might not be enough fun, but they still uh, sign up for uh, the clean election and then they run out, are they allowed? And I don't know who answered, are they allowed to go back to the money that they have uh, from their previous campaign, if yes, do they have to give up that uh, money from their previous campaign ahead of time before they sign up, or do they wait until to make sure that they are fully funded before they give up that money? I think they do, but I think Brandon has. Yeah, I, if, if it, our original proposal follows state, in essence, all previous campaign funds have to be sort of dispersed in in one of the legal ways before you can even sort of take out the declaration of intent. Um, I didn't see anything in your memo that suggested changing that. So Correct. I think our goal will be just to change uh, the things that are sort of in your memo and then allow the council to, to make amendments as needed on the funding numbers and, and the, the other pieces. But it would have to be, in order to take out that declaration of intent, if you have prior campaign funds, those have to be dispersed in a proper way up to the seed money. So you can give basically yourself $100 from that. The rest of it, can be donated to the Clean Elections Fund um, to help supplement that, that budget issue, but um, it does have to be dispersed if we if we follow that uh, state rule, which um, is is how it works. Right. Uh, that is my understanding. Until Councilor Travero answered your question, that if uh, uh, there's no more fund to disperse, a candidate is allowed to go and raise money up to the amount. So if just for the benefit of this conversation. If I have ten dollars and I have to give up that ten dollars, and then um, I sign up, and then there's not enough money, and now I have to raise twenty dollars. If I keep my ten dollars, I mean, you all know that raising money is a lot of work. It's as much work as collecting signatures and collecting those, uh, how do we call it, uh, uh, five dollar checks. Uh, so, if I have to give up my twenty, my ten dollars from the beginning, and then down the line, um, I'm short another $10 and I have to raise $20. That is a lot of work. Can we, right, get, it's just a suggestion. Can we get uh, candidates to, if they sign up, keep their money from the previous, at the end of everything, they give that back. I'm just trying to make sure that we don't go into a situation where somebody give up their money and then you ask them to go back and raise money. Well, I, I understand, but the whole idea here is to keep private money out of elections by opting to go clean elections, right? right. So even the idea of going back and raising private money because the fund run, runs out is really contrary to what you're trying yes. to do in the first place. And that's why the requirement at the state level and what we put in the ordinance here is that you have to get rid of that privately raised money if you're going to go clean elections. So uh, you can't have it both ways, I guess, is, is the issue. If you want 
the spirit of this to be that you, you want to keep private money out of elections. Right. That's why maybe I, I understand the concern with proration, but you, you, at least it ensures everybody gets some level of public funding for their campaigns instead of suddenly saying, hey, I'm sorry, there's not enough money for you. You were the last to file and you got to go raise your money privately now, which right. goes against the whole program. Just a thought. No, thank you. Councilor Fonier. Um, I'm wondering, have we modeled how many people it would take to actually run out of money? So for this first year, given the numbers that we've been presented, do we have an idea? And I know it's hard because you have the rounds and there's a lot of variables, but is there, like if we have 20 people run, are we out of money? If we have 10 people run, are we out of money? So I, I tried, I, I did not game Councilor Trevorrow's proposal. I, I kind of gamed out um, our three proposals um, with sort of, and I, I didn't bring with them because it was so many uh, alternates sure. with one sort of, um, with three may mayoral candidates, with two at large, one district, and then one school board. So um, there was one model with the higher, our model with the higher seed money, if you had those as constant, and who knows how many people we got tonight with the $260,000 contribution because of the higher supplement from the seed money, we got to about 98% funded. Um, I did not for seven, eight, I think eight total candidates at the different. That's also in incorporating higher, higher qualifying contributions because that helps supplement the fund. Right. And um, the higher, um, or the, the higher qualifying contributions, the higher seed money uh, and the lower disp Disbursement. So it's not the 120, it was that $75,000 number. Okay. So I have a spreadsheet that I'm happy to try to, to game things out, but without knowing how, who qualifies and how many candidates you have, um, it's really hard to do. Sure. Um, and the reason I ask is just as we're thinking about the, you know, the whole idea of this, again, is to keep private money out to make this more accessible. So I think there is also the reality that not everybody is going to take advantage of this program. Others might just choose to privately fund um, or do traditional funding, and that's fine. I think if just thinking of if we have 10 people running in the various offices, it's likely that this program would be able to do 98% funding um, is sort of where we're very, very loosely yeah. <laughs> saying. And increasing that seed money, especially if it helped. Sure. I mean, it, it ended up with three mayoral candidates. If you had it at 10,000 instead of five, that's $30,000 total. That's sort of underlying supplementing. Um, Perfect. Awesome. Thank you. Councilor Trevorrow. I would just note um, this year, it's going to cost more because it's a mayoral year. So it's not going to be that much every year, but um you know, my sort of, an, it, my intent is um, to just, I would rather budget more than we end up needing and incur savings than um, have to, you know, run into that last resort of, of candidates having to go private. Cause I think mm -hmm. that it's, you know, ultimately unfair to the candidates. Yeah. Councilor, Councilor Trevorrow, thank you for saying that because as a, uh, uh, Attorney James said, uh, if the spirit of this is to take um, private money out of our um, democratic process, then nobody should go and have to raise money or keep their money. And then, as I said earlier, so thank you. Um, do we know, and I think uh, city manager, I'm gonna look at you because you may be the only one that was here. When there was the, uh, the open mayor seat, how many people contested that was, uh, the first one, because that's the only time that we have an open seat. Yeah, the, as we're going to have this. The November. first year we had an elected mayor. I think my recollection is there was ten candidates, but that's a little that's a little dusty. But I, I think I remember there being a lot, um, quite a few. So Not to say that all of those candidates obviously would want to qualify for this fund, but I do remember there being quite a few. So is it possible to say uh, that? Uh, and then the second one had two and two and three. Yeah, they have gone down. Um, I don't know what that says about us. So last year, last year was three. Job, but yeah, um, I'm not, not going to comment on that. But right. um, the candidate pool has definitely has definitely gone down since that time. Yeah, I I want to make a data inform. Uh, how do we call it? Uh, 
decision um, following your foot, uh, footsteps. I, I think uh, maybe we can take the average of that. In the past three years, um, we had a 10, two and three, that is a 15. You divide that by three. Councillor Rodriguez is your calculator, oh, that's five. So we can, we can budget for, gone were the days when data will be flying in this chamber. Today we don't have that data person. So maybe we can make five, uh, budget on five uh, mayor candidates and then figure out the rest. The other seats that will be open this year. Just a suggestion. Are, are you talking, Mayor Pro Tem, about gaming it out for five candidates? <laughs> yes, I mean, presume that if because Councillor Fournier was asking the budget numbers, like how many, how many is, uh, uh, how many candidates was uh, the numbers that we landed on, and as I was saying that. Uh, I, I have the spreadsheet that I can try to plug in uh, with Councillor Trevorrow's based on five mayoral and a few, you know, of the other other seats. Um, I just picked random, so I didn't actually look. I knew we had a, I think we actually have two districts, potential two districts this year and an at large. So I didn't do, I didn't do exactly this year's gaming to be, okay. I was just doing something that's a random just to see but I can certainly take five and, and actually plug in. Won't take that much work. The unknowns are, is it 500? Is it 260? Um, and then for the 500,000 or how many qualify? So if I take it off of her proposal um, as a straw poll, we can, I can at least have that. It, I don't think it'll take me too, too long to at least, it's gonna be ugly. Uh, I hope you like Excel, but um, I can certainly do that. Thank you. Councilor Rodriguez. I'm sorry, I was just, uh, I have two things. On this um, that we're discussing right now, and we can just go back the last 10 years, which includes two mayoral elections and look at the average amount of candidates that have qualified for the ballot. I think that'd be probably a good starting point for us to look at you know, potential averages. 10 years, I think should give us enough because again, it has two mayoral elections there. Um, I have a question and I'm sorry that we discussed this and I just wasn't, it wasn't where I was um, focusing on. Um, on the $5 contributions that are collected, um, let's say a potential candidate starts to collect them uh, at some point, you know, they send them to the city at some point, they decide to go traditional. Um, what happens to that money that was sent to the city? That's just revenue yeah. for the city. The candidate has no obligation to it. So there's, there's sort of two pools where you get your seed money, yeah. which presumably under the ordinance it's goes yours. into the separate, you yeah. could keep. Any qualifying, those $5 contributions are in essence the funds, or at least how, as it's proposed. So if you collect them under our current proposal, you decide not to go clean, those $5 contributions go into the fund. Um, you would be able to retain seed money. Yeah. Um, that becomes, and again, with the editing here, that may become less of an issue um, in that we're not doing the proration. So the only reason that somebody sort of backs out of, the, out of that uh, declaration of intent was because of the proration piece. If we're getting rid of that proration, once you sort of sign your declaration of intent and the potential new affidavit, you're, I think you're, you're going to be in similar to the state system. Um, but so I'm not sure it becomes as big of an issue. Um, okay. I think, uh, I guess I was envisioning again, just a candidate for whatever reason drop or not wanting to be part of clean elections after those $5 contributions have already been, you know, given to the city checks cashed and cleared. Um, I wanted, I just wanted to know about those $5 yeah, um, in so regards I, to the candidates. There's no the obligation city, there. It's yeah. The it's a city fund. fund. That's what uh, I want. That'd probably be more in that sort of towards the end of the ordinance, the sort of death uh, withdrawal um, section, as opposed to that probation piece. And, and to make that clean, Clear, then maybe you want to have those checks payable to the city, yeah. to the fund, rather than to the candidate who would write a check to the fund. We've, I know you've gone back and forth on that, but yeah, and and we could put that in the consensus document. Yeah, I think I and I said this last time. I think um, the five dollar contribution should always be written out to the city, seat money to the candidate, and that's the way that you both financially uh, and in your books keep that separate. Mm -hmm. um, and and I I'm perfectly fine that yeah I 
totally agree that, you know, to the candidate that are collecting the $5 contributions, those goes to the city, that money said and done, you decide to not take clean elections, you know, thank you for contributing to the fund, good luck in your election. So I'm, I'm perfectly fine with that. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Dayan, is your hand up? All right. Well, it seems, I will try and maybe third time is a charm. It seems like we are at a good place to, to wrap up unless, uh, Someone have something else that they want us to discuss. Brandon, are we, Jim and Brandon, are we, are we good to go? The question was whether you want to adopt those same percentages of foreign ownership, 1% and 5% uh, for a, an, an ent business entity that's in substantially influenced by a foreign owner. And uh, like I said, Seattle has gone with the 1% for a single investor who's foreign owned uh, and 5% for two or more. And if you want to adopt those, I'm subject to all caveats that I've announced before, and I don't want to go through them again. Uh, those are the numbers in, in Seattle and San Diego is going in that same direction. Are we talking about uh, uh, foreign corporations or this? Yeah, we're talking about the campaign finance rep part because everyone's focused on clean elections. That was part of that. But there was another part of the question, too, that talked about uh, campaign finance and uh, adopting the same thing with, as the state has, saying that no business entity can contribute to a candidate and also that foreign and business entities that are substantially controlled by a foreign investor can't contribute to ballot questions or, as we know it, initiative or referendum. And so that's part of it. And so the question is, what is a foreign entity that is substantially controlled by a, what's an entity controlled by a foreign investor? Is it someone who owns, uh, you know, a foreign investor that owns 1% of that entity or two or more foreign investors who own 5% of that entity? Those are the numbers Seattle uses in its ordinance, which is used as a basis for this whole provision. And so, you know, we'll plug those in if that's what you want to do, and you can respond to them in uh, an amendment if you wish, if that sounds fine. Councillor Dyer. Jim, well, just for the record for people listening, when you say foreign, you're talking Canadian, Mexican, European, not, not Rhode Island. Well, that, that's an interesting question, because the, uh, the Charter Commission, I, I posed that to the Charter Commission as we were going through, saying, you know, if you're talking about state of incorporation, Delaware is a foreign corporation. Exactly. I don't think you're talking about the Delaware investor. And, and they aren't. I mean, they, they are looking at foreign as in another nation. Uh, that's not defined in the Charter. I think it's how we're defining it for your ordinance so that it, we try to limit the repercussions. We're talking about someone from another nation investing uh in, in a campaign basically saying that some um, I'm, I'm not even no, no, yeah. well let me ask you okay yeah. this, a foreign corporation is a term of art so now we're saying we're going to define that we're defining the assumption it. it's extra national correct okay so we saying that under this proposal that if someone owns two percent of that business entity they should be barred from making an investment is that that's what are we, what what are we saying with that that's what we're saying two percent well one percent if a single foreign investor owns part of that entity five percent of two or more uh foreign investors and, and again this comes from the seattle ordinance and it was the seattle ordinance that was used by uh main clean elections and, and what they were proposing to the charter commission and what the charter commission looked at that's that's a pretty minimal ownership position. I understand the position was that um, the SEC was looking at it as being foreign investment at that level. I don't know. I've never independently researched it. I'm just telling you what I read. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is your hand up? So um, what percentage do counselors feel comfortable with? Five. Are you you good about the one one to five? Okay. Are we all on the same page? All right. I'm seeing. Speed it out, Councillor Dyer. There you go. I, I'll I'll go along with it. I'm just I'll go along with it. Okay. I won't bore you with the wrestling match going inside my head. 
Thank you, Councillor Dial. Um, Jim and Brandon, are we done or? I think we're, I think we're done as far as we, we have our marching orders and we know what we need to do to get a draft in here for first read next week. Question I have is uh, once we get the first read done, what does the amendment process look like? How do you want us involved? Uh, do you want us involved? Uh, who's going to draft those amendments? Because ultimately we'd want to make sure that those amendments actually work. Mm -hmm. I see that Michael Goldman yeah. is going to prompt you. There his hand is. There it goes up. Okay. <laughs> uh, and there he is. Hi, Michael. <laughs> we we uh, can't yeah. hear you. We can, I have to uh, open his. Okay. Good evening. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, good. Sorry. Um, yeah, no. Uh, thank you both for... Um, for your presentation tonight. You guys have done a lot of work and I really appreciate it. Certainly helping out my office quite a bit. Um, I think for, um, for purposes of amendments, I mean, I think it would be be great to have you involved as we move through the through the process. Um, you know, both of you, I've I've um, read through the uh, um, the ordinances that you've drafted and you know weighed in a bit um, with some minor suggestions but um, but I think as we go through the process your intimate knowledge of the uh, of the provisions will be helpful um, uh, probably as we go through the the process of getting it approved at the at the meeting so having you there for the um, for the second read I think will be will be helpful. So if counselors have ind you know, individual amendments, should they send them to both uh, Corporation Council and to us so that we can be ready on that second read? Yeah, they can do that or they can forward them to me and I can pass them right on to you, um, it's, which is, is, that's fine with me as well. Fair enough, thank you. We just wanted to make sure we knew how to proceed. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. You betcha. And thank you for your estimate. Thank you, Michael. You bet. Councilor Dyer, you look like you wanna say something. I don't. Okay, thank you. <laughs> All right, it seems like uh, thank you, uh, thank you, everybody. I the meeting. I'm gonna adjourn the meeting so that it doesn't look like there's anything else. Oh, oh it's not. A, it's not a. No, you want to see me do it? Okay. All right. <laughs>